Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Silver Strand State Beach Park. My name is Laura Doolin, and I am a California State Park interpreter here at the Silver Strand. Now, today we're going to be learning about uh, the journey of the San Diego Bay Eastern Pacific Green Sea Turtles. All right. We're, at certain times, I may ask you to have a partner to discuss things with. And also, we might even, we will sing a song at the end, and hopefully you'll join me. All right, so let's take a look at the map so you can see where we're located. All right, this is a map of San Diego, right? That's where I am, and you see the San Diego Bay, and the Silver Strand State Beach is in that blue circle. Now, this beach uh, is actually, we have Coronado to the north and Imperial Beach to the south. And this is a narrow, kind of a narrow strip of land made of sand. And the uh, park actually has an ocean side and a bay side. And we are on the San Diego Bay side. All right, so I'm going to just let you look around a little bit. Okay, I'm going to pan the camera around, take a look at where we're at. It's a beautiful day at the beach. Right, we have all kinds of sailboats, all these winter birds, migratory ducks are down, floating around out there in the water, the mountains in the background. Just a beautiful day at the park. Okay. So let's talk about our Eastern Pacific green sea turtles, right? These are beautiful, mysterious creatures that a lot of people that live here, they don't even know about them because they're under the water, right? Well, let's take a look. Okay, this is our Eastern Pacific green sea turtle. Now, we estimate there are around 100 turtles living in our bay. And it's kind of hard to tell, but they're quite a large turtle, right? They're, they weigh around 300, 350 pounds. And they come here to our bay in search of this eelgrass. You see this bright green grass that the turtle is swimming in, right? That is really what they come to our bay for. Um, they're, here, the San Diego Bay has about 50% of all the eelgrass that, that is found in Southern California. So we have a great resource here. All right, so does anybody want to guess? Talk to your partner. What do you think these sea turtles eat in the bay? All right, take a minute and ask your partner, what do you think is their favorite food? What do you think they're eating? Give you a minute. Okay, take a look. So if you said eelgrass, right, that is correct. These sea turtles really like to eat eelgrass. Now, the eelgrass is very nutritious and these sea turtles, actually, the green sea turtle is largely herbivorous, meaning it really only eats plants for the most part. But there are some exceptions. You see when the middle pitcher, right, we have the baby sea turtle. And the baby sea turtle oftentimes will eat jellyfish and sponges, like we see in this photo. And then the pitcher at the bottom, we see the turtle eating other sea grasses and also little invertebrates, little shrimp and crabs that are found in those grasses is also something that helps fill their diet. Okay, good. Now, there's a problem. I know a lot of you have heard about this, but let's discuss it a little more. Sometimes the turtle, right, eats things that are not, not good for it. And that is because it has a very hard time telling in the water, is this a jellyfish 
or is this a plastic bag? So I want, as an experiment, you and your partner to try to guess. In these pictures, we have turtle one, turtle two, turtle three. So one of the turtles is eating a plastic bag, unfortunately, and the other two are eating jellyfish. See if you can guess which turtle is unfortunately eating the plastic bag. I'll give you a minute or two. Okay, okay. Well, so the answer was turtle three is the turtle eating the plastic bag. And maybe you guessed it, right? And that's good. But unfortunately, like I said, the turtles have a very hard time telling the difference. And what happens if they eat very many bags of those plastic bags? Uh, it's a real problem. They can get very sick and they can, they can even die. So that leads us to the fact that we really need to keep any garbage out of the water, right? It's crucial, it's crucial we do that. So let's talk a little bit about more in depth about this problem with the garbage getting into the water and hurting our sea turtles. So if we look at this picture on the left, right? This is a picture of a watershed. Now a watershed is an area of land where all of the water, when it rains, will drain into one place. So kind of think of a bathtub and all that water drains in one, into one area, right? So just like in this picture, it's raining, the water will drain into the streams, into the river, and then into a bay or into the ocean. So this is good, except for if we have any pollution on that land, it gets washed into those streams and then down into that bay and into the ocean. And on the picture on the right is a picture of a storm drain. So you've probably seen this, right? Between the sidewalk and the road, we have a storm drain. And when, the, when it rains, the water needs a place to go or it will flood the street, right? So the storm drain gives that water a place to go. But if anybody has thrown a little plastic wrapper or dumped any paint, any bad chemicals around there, when it rains, it all washes into the storm drain. And that water then washes into, uh, just like on the left, it washes into a stream and it can make its way to our bay. So I hope you understand why it's so important that we keep right our sidewalks and our roads clean from any trash. So hopefully you can do that. You can help keep it clean, right? You can even join a community cleanup. Anything you can to keep the water clean for our animals is awesome. Okay. So I want to talk about one other type of pollution that can be real harmful for our sea life. So in this picture on the left, what happens is the turtle has gotten caught in an old fishing net, right? So then it's trapped. But these really nice divers have are taking the net off of the turtle so it's free to swim around. Um, but we wanna keep that gear, that kind of gear that the, that the turtles or any other sea life can get caught in out of the water. So we see on the right, we see a seal caught in a, in a rope, right? And that nice diver is freeing that, that seal. Uh, so all of this type of trash and garbage, um, old, fishing gear we want to keep out of the water right we want to keep our keep our marine life free from any of these things so good i hope you'll help me help me make that happen all right so next let's talk a little bit about our sea turtles and their ability to hold their breath and be underwater right so how long i want you to ask your partner how long can an Eastern Pacific green sea turtle Okay, looks like uh, we are back in. 
I'm sorry, we had a little disruption there. Okay, you with me? Awesome. All right, let's go back to where I was. All right, so we're talking about how long the Eastern Pacific green sea turtle can hold its breath. So, give you 20 more seconds. Right, see what you can figure out. So, I'll go ahead and type. So the turtle can, will be down there, and on average it comes up every 30 minutes for a breath, right? but it can also hold its breath for around two hours as it's down there eating. But in extreme cases, when it's winter, if it's not eating much, right, it can slow its heart rate and hold its breath for up to six hours. Crazy, huh? Some crazy stuff, something we can't do, but it's a special ability that the turtle has evolved to have. Okay, next, let's talk a little bit about where these turtles come from. So they aren't hatched or born here in the bay. They actually come from these islands off of Mexico. So here's a map of Mexico. And if we look on the map, right up in the corner, if we go down and follow, we are located on the top left-hand corner, but if we go down, follow the blue line, the islands are circled, right, in red. Those are Las Islas Revia Hijeros. They're owned by Mexico. It's a national park. It's a protected place. And that's where our turtles were born. That's where they come from, right? A thousand miles south of here. So let's look at this picture. This is a picture of one of the Revia Hijeros islands. Beautiful. It looks very remote, right? Now, so the turtles, right, they are turtles that we have here. The female lays the eggs in the sand, right? And then our female turtles will then swim all the way back up to the bay and leave the eggs to, to incubate for two months. Now, after about two months, those baby sea turtles, will hatch and instinctively they will know what to do, right? So the mother sea turtle does not have to be there with them. They know just what to do. So let's look at one of these turtles. Beautiful, huh? This is a baby sea turtle just having been hatched, right? It's new to the world. So this baby sea turtle will have a journey. I know many of you have already know how difficult this is for the little baby sea turtle, right? It has to scramble down, down the beach and make, make it past all of its predators like the seagulls or, or anything else that wants to eat the baby sea turtle. So they scramble down the beach and then they launch into the water, right? And what happens next is that they believe the little baby sea turtles will float around on different seaweeds, like the sargassum seaweed. They get protection from the seaweed, right? And they can also eat little fish larvae, little things that will be attracted and found in the seaweed help feed them and they'll get stronger. So they'll float around for two or three years in these seaweeds getting stronger and bigger. And once they're strong enough, and big enough, they'll come to bays like we have here in San Diego Bay, right, in search of the eelgrass. And they will live in our bay ha eating the eelgrass. And then other bays in Baja, bays along the uh, coast of California, wherever they can find the sea grasses, right, and the eelgrass, this will help give them their, some of their favorite foods. So, here in the bay, the, uh, the turtles, once they reach 20 to 50 years of age, 
right? These female turtles, they'll go down with the male tur turtles down to the Rivia Hijedos Islands and breed every four years having more baby sea turtles and come back. And so that is the pattern in their life. That is their great journey. Okay, so for fun, I'd like you to stand up with me. Okay. I can't see you, but I feel like you must be standing up with me. And we are going to swim like the green sea turtle. Okay, everybody. We're going to do a little swimming, right? We're going to imagine that we are this green sea turtle swimming down to the Revilla Hijedos Islands. So these sea turtles will swim about 15 miles per hour or even up to 35 miles per hour if they're trying to escape from uh, some kind of predators. They will also ride the currents, right? And this gives them an extra advantage. All right, so you can sit down, good job. So the, that is the amazing journey of our sea turtles. Now, show you something else here. So let's talk a little bit about how long these turtles live. So how old do you think the Eastern Pacific green sea turtle can get? Take a guess with your partner. Do you think it's 10 years old, 30 years old, 80, 120? I'm gonna give you a minute or two to see if you can guess with your partner. All right, so on average, we might say about 80 years old, similar to a human, right? But they can possibly live much longer, even 120 years old, or possibly longer than that. We don't honestly know because they often outlive a scientist that is studying the turtle. Uh, They're very long lived, it's pretty amazing. All right. So I wanna talk a little bit about how do we know so much about these turtles in the bay? Well, we have hardworking scientists who over the years, they develop and add to the knowledge about these turtles. So here in this picture, we have a NOAA scientist in the middle. Uh, some, a couple of NOAA scientists are gently netting the turtles, taking them out of the water right? And they will tag the turtle and take different measurements of the turtle. So they can, over the years, measure the health of the turtle and learn how to, how to uh, know how to protect the turtles in our bay. Now, on the left, we see that this turtle has a tracking device attached to its back. It doesn't hurt the turtle, but allows the scientists to know the movement of the turtle. And after about a year, this tracking device will fall off. So again, many scientists over the years have contributed to this great knowledge we have of the sea turtles here in our bay. All right. So lastly, uh, in terms of protecting the sea turtle, I wanna talk about our sea turtle here, Sapphire. So Sapphire is a loggerhead sea turtle, and she lives across the bay in a nature center called the Living Coast Discovery Center. Now, she lives in an aquarium as an educational turtle. What happened to Sapphire was that she's from Florida, and when she was swimming out in an area, a boat was going too fast, and it sapphire so you see the back seems like it has some damage it made it so that sapphire can't float correctly so uh, now sapphire cannot live in the wild she has to live in the nature center they have even created a special vest for sapphire so that she can kind of swim upright correctly which is wonderful but the lesson we want to learn there right, is that we need to boat carefully and slowly when we are in a bay like this and look out for the turtles. 
So let's do a little exercise so we remember this important thing. All right, I want you to stand up with me. Again, please stand up, stand up. Just for fun, we're going to imagine that we are the captain of a boat. Okay, everyone standing up. So we have our boat, we're steering our boat, right? And what we want to do as the captain is to slow the boat down, right? Everybody with me, steering the boat, slow the boat down. And we want to look for the sea turtles. All right, slow the boat down and look for the sea turtles and other marine life so we don't actually accidentally hit it. Good job, good job. You can have a seat, you can have a seat, very good. Okay, so one of the last things we're gonna do is to sing a song about our sea turtles. Pull that back up. All right, so this is the Sea Turtles Swimming in the Sea song by Singing Songs of Science. That's, that's a mouthful. All right, so, I want, I'm hoping everyone will sing with me, right? It doesn't matter if you have a good voice. We all can enjoy singing and feel good about it. All right. So let me get my ukulele. All right. Here's my ukulele I'm going to use. Now, in this song, you see there are some notes, right? The D, D, A, D. Those are notes I'm gonna play on the ukulele. And the words, you're gonna sing with me. Okay, and go real slow so that you can sing with me. Are you ready? Okay. Sea turtles, sea turtles, swimming in the sea. Sea turtles, sea turtles, wild and free. Sea turtle, sea turtle, swimming in the ocean. The waves and the motion, swimming in the sea. La la la. La 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 la. There's a little bit more. I want you singing with me. Here we go. You need our help to stay safe. Safe and strong and keep the ocean clean. We're gonna do our things. I promise to you. We'll protect you and your home in the sea. All right. I hope you sang with me and were willing to be silly, right? And mainly, I hope that you remember to do everything you can to learn more about these beautiful sea turtles and to protect them. Right? And I hope you come visit us here at the Silver Strand Beach one day. All right. Bye-bye. Oh, oh, hold on. I almost forgot. If you have any questions, you can write me at the Silver Strand at ports-ca.us. All right. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.